it's beginning to taste a lot like Christmas. And where you go? Oh, my. Uh, Start? Are you okay? Uh, no. I think I caught the mocking pneumonia from the last riff. I... I can't watch Clash of the Titans like this. I can't. I can't... <coughs> enjoy it. Oh, that's awful, Starch. What we need is something that won't be any less fun if you're reviewing it while sick. I... I know! I, oh, I, this'll be perfect! Hang on. Oh, please, please, Jim. That's not helping. Starch, if television has taught me anything, it's that the Christmas spirit can cure any ill! I explain the Christmas shoes, then. Clearly. In that case, the ill was the main character's lack of Christmas spirit. Ugh, I'm too sick to argue. What have you got- Elf bowling. Elf bowling? Elf bowling. But we don't review crappy 90s PC games. Trent, euthanasia is illegal in this state, right? Sadly. Oh, you are a rake. Well, I'm Sunny Jim. That's Starch doing his own mucus, and this is Rangoon Reviews. <laughs> Well, this is a thing that apparently exists. So here's some background. Elf bowling was a very brief internet phenomenon in 1999. Back when Joe Cartoon was a thing. <sighs> Remember that? Of course not. Fun fact, subtlety wasn't allowed on the internet until 2006. The basic upshot of this game is that the elves have gone on strike, so Santa decides to respond by murdering them by the score, ho-ho-hoing the entire time. Stir in some weak sauce voice modulated insults, dated pop culture non sequiturs, and a dash of fart noises to get a game that's far dumber than it sounds, and seven sequels. The port of the first two elf bowling games for the Nintendo DS is one of the lowest rated games in history. Mull that over with your wine. But we're here to talk about a movie, so... So you think you know how Santa Claus became Father Christmas, eh? <laughs> well, think again. Ah, it's a Kris Kringle cliché. Strap in, kids. We open with a gang of smelly pirates who steal toys and then resell them. So, uh, step above Hot Wheels collectors. Pull it down, you stinking swabs! So... Santa was a pirate. That's, uh... Not totally without historical precedent. What? Turns out that the historical Saint Nicholas is the patron saint of children, sailors, thieves, archers, and pawnbrokers, amongst many others. Combine thieves with sailors and you get pirates. Also, there's a weird story about how Saint Nicholas appeared to a crew of pirates and told them to steal and move his relics so they wouldn't be there when Miro was invaded by the Turks. Well, that was highly informative. So let's completely ruin that moment with this. Who pooped in the peanut barrel? Who pooped in the peanut barrel? Ah! Folks, we're only 85 seconds into this. This may be a record for feces jokes in kids' movies. And since we don't feel like doing the research to find out if we're wrong... Come on! Turns out, Santa's not all he currently appears to be. He's racked with guilt over stealing kids' toys, and is leaving them behind in the vague hope that they'll make it to orphanages. Soggy, salt-encrusted, and full of dead jellyfish. Thanks, Santa! Also, kudos to the film for being so confident in their audience that this remorse need only be expressed in a single scene and never spoken of again. And of course, Santa's an avid bowler, and forces his crew to join him in the games. The winner taking gold from the losers. Three minutes and nine seconds. Ugh. Turns out Santa's weaselly half-brother Dingle Kringle, voiced by the always amusing Tom Kenny, 
has screwed with the score to make Santa win. They cooked the box! Ah! Dingo cooked the box! The crew is none too happy, and the dueling brothers are tossed overboard, where they instantly freeze into blocks of ice. So, they're dead now, right? Is the movie over? Can I go back to sleep? Eh, maybe they'll get picked up by S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, I see, in case we confused it with all the other elf bowling movies out there. The two wash ashore where they're discovered by a group of elves, at which point the hideousness of the character models really shines. Ugh. They're all... look at that. Everyone's got this hideous, porous texture. I'm guessing this is an attempt to make it look like claymation, but the result is more like some hideous flesh golem. Still, they're less creepy than the kids from Polar Express. Santa and Dingle are freed by the head elf Lex, who has a magic ball that does pretty much whatever the plot requires. <coughs> oh. The elves have a legend that someone named Whitebeard will lead them. This will not come up again. Like so much in this movie, it's a flimsy excuse to drag the plot along and then be immediately discarded. Santa gets Dingle to shut the hell up for a few moments, and the elves take them to their factory where they make... Doodle Bobbins. Doodle Bobbins are toys. <laughs> of course the elves who speak perfect modern English in every other regard would have a different, complicated name for toys. Why the hell wouldn't they? Lex explains that all they do is make toys, play with them for a little bit, and then shove them into storage caves, never to be touched again. So what exactly is the point of... Oh. Dingle, ever the idiot, lunges for Lex's magic ball. A phrase I never want to say again. There's a struggle, and finally we have a justification for the title. It's, uh, well, it's uh, me favorite game, lad. <laughs> bowling. Uh, elf bowling, that is. <laughs> Whitebeard's favorite game is elf bowling! You shattered our ankles! Hooray! See? It's not cruel. They like it! The elves aren't being abused. They're just hardcore S&M freaks. This is much more kid-friendly. And now, something we cannot even quip on and must present as is... Can I interest you in some hot mittens? They just fell off the truck. Beat it! <laughs> How about some smoked anchovies? Strip pinochle. Oh, now you're talking, Bernie. You can give away the toys we make to children every day of the week. Mm. Nah, too much work. Besides, if them brats, I mean little darlings, got free toys all the time, they'd be spoiled silly. How about you just give them the toys on one special day of the year? Really? This is your reason for the season? Forget the veneration of the burst of the Christ child, or the commercially reappropriated Saturnalia. I totally buy the elfish version of Storage Wars. Oh, it gets better. Only work one day a year? Plus a few parades and mall openings. But the bottom line is, you got free room and board. And that's the story of Christmas, kids. Hand-me-downs delivered by a violent thief trying to get out of real work. Just like when you visit that one weird uncle's place. Merry Christmas! But in the spirit of the holidays, let us forgive and find some good in this. Oi. For every white-bearded elf guy, there are just as many females and elves of color. Casual diversity is a positive thing to show to kids, ultimately leading to a better understanding and respect for all people. First, there's Rebel, who's in charge of packaging. Yo, yo, when the presents need wrapping, I'm the one make that happen. My feet start tapping, my hands keep a clapping. In times like these, one must turn to the words of a far wiser man than I. No, 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 Thank God for beef indeed. Lex uses that magic ball he stores in his ass to make Santa a sleigh and reindeer, adding create new life to its list of magic plot convenient powers. Okay, moving on. Do you hate holiday music? Well, you're about to. But never fear, for I have the solution to all these woes. A formalized agreement. Yes, it's a holiday song about unions bargaining contractual obligations. If the elves aren't happy, they go on strike. I don't know, it seems you could keep these prize winners happy just by dangling some keys in front of them. I mean, look at this. What is with these elves? Most of the elves are so inbred they don't even survive a common cold. 
So after the little ditty about needing a contract in order to continue doing the thing they've been doing of their own free will for untold years before, the now magically immortal Santa begins his job of delivering used goods across the planet. Ugh. <clears throat> On my doctor's advice, I will not spend 20 minutes ranting about the anachronistic nature of all this going down in the 7th century. But Dingle is still being a total dick. Wait one damn minute. Rewind that. Stop. Right there. That's the Spanish Inquisition. Well, that's an organization whose presence I hadn't foreseen. Are they? They have a guy on the wheel. They're torturing him. We have a picture of Santa Claus cheerfully giving presents to one of the most reprehensible groups in history while they are in the middle of torturing somebody. That Santa is a real bastard! Wait, we just used one of our own videos as a cutaway gag. Can we do that? Yes? I mean, it's not like it's gonna break anything. I just get the feeling that we're screwing around with internet video forces that neither man nor Rangoon were meant to meddle with. Are we okay? Everything okay? You are now! Dr. Dr. Y! You created a paradox. Be glad you don't remember the horrid events before I close the time loop, because that's how time travel works this week. Now, let's not go mucking about with the rules of internet review causality again, alright? We, we won't. won't. Well, I must be off to save 1920s London from the terrible turnipins from the Trigalium Emissions Nebula. So awesome. So where were we? Oh yes, fast forward 1400 years. Santa's married and Dingle's still an evil, scheming jackass. Only now he's living on Santa's couch, making Mrs. Claus none too happy. Santa insists that Dingle move out. Wait, wasn't this movie called Elf Bowling? For 1,400 years of hard work, your own bowling alley! Okay, that's quite enough of that. Let's move on to the not bowling-related actual plot. Dingle's pissy about having to move out for... reasons, and conspires with the penguins to take over Christmas. Because this time, Santa ain't coming to town! Ugh! <laughs> uh, a hell mouth just opened wait Oh, it's just a bad CGI model. Dingle challenges Santa to a round of elf bowling, and the winner takes control of Christmas. Santa accepts, because he's stupid like that. Oh, did we say a round? Sorry one throw. Because when you make a movie called Elf Bowling, you want to be sure it has as little bowling as possible. Of course, Dingle blatantly cheats to get a strike and deny Santa his. The treachery is immediately discovered, thus making the whole scene a total plot cul-de-sac. We're not kidding. After this we cut right back to another plot, only this time not bowling related, and it's got an accompanying musical number. Oh goody. I can just hear the director of this thing in my head. Damn it! We paid to mocap these actors! More songs! Dingle's penguin minions, lovingly referred to only as imbeciles, fudge the toy count by six billion and sabotage the hell out of the toy factory to make it look like Lex is to blame, thus driving a wedge between him and Santa. Dingle tells Santa that Lex is stuck on an ice flow, and Santa believes him because he's stupid like that. This sets up a chain of events that leaves the factory in a smoking ruin, and frames Santa for the mess. Amble like grandmother slowly away from the danger! Oh, and coincidentally, Santa gets instantly frozen in a block of ice again. Thus, like every other Christmas story in existence, Christmas is in danger of being cancelled. <laughs> oh. Where your buttocks never freeze It's called Monorail. Yep, Dingle gets another musical number, convincing the elves to pack up and start a new shop in Fiji. Remember now, Dingle's been a well-known con man and criminal for 1400 years, and the elves immediately believe him, thereby making the residents of South Park look like Christopher Hitchens by comparison. And they're off to sunny Fiji. Not content to have the only woman in this film be a blithering, sexy Nordic bimbo stereotype, on the plane we meet a gold-digging vamp out to seduce Dingle for his money and influence. He spends most of her introduction calling her wench. Nice. You may be wondering who this woman is. So are we. Seriously, we're suddenly introduced to this major antagonist with no backstory whatsoever in the last third of the film. All we know is her breasts jiggle. And that's really disturbing. See from the games? I don't know, and I don't care. 
She makes so little impression it'd be a waste of everyone's time if I even told you to pretend she wasn't there. Once in Fiji, Dingle uses hypnosis to make the elves, who previously worked for free, <gasps> work for free! That monster! One magic ball theft later, and Dingle is all set in his plot to charge kids for their Christmas toys, which will eventually lead him and Veronica to ruling the world! S somehow! Back at the North Pole, Santa's wife Griselda shows up with a sleigh and thaws Santa out. Thus freed, Santa arrives on Fiji only to be stopped by a pair of magically animated tiki statues. Huh? <laughs> yeah, right, dude. Tiki magic surfer statues, tiki magic surfer statues. This was cutting edge humor in 1997. Ten years before the film was made. I swear there isn't one clever joke in this hole. We should rake in a cushy six trillion. Hallelujah! <laughs> <coughs> well played, Elf Bowling. Well played. Fortunately, for the movie's desire to dodge any kind of conflict, the Tiki Guardians are easily swayed by Lex and Santa's bromance. This is like a chick flick, except instead of smoking babes, dude, it's a munchkin and a fat guy. <laughs> Damn it, movie. Do not make me not completely hate you. There's one more Tiki to get past, so of course, it's up to an ancillary character to save the day. What? This is some really weird shit. I mean, where did this- Oh, so beautiful. Oi. Uh, let's see, uh, yeah. Come on, Starch! Home stretch! Right. Sorry. Inside the sweatshop, Lex literally stumbles onto the only way to dehypnotize the elves. And once again, Santa contributes nothing to the resolution of the plot. Huzzah! Bleep am I? Yeah, and what the bleep's happening? Huh, how come my underwear's on backwards? Moving, Moving on, on quickly. quickly! Why, if it isn't the first lady of Christmas? Um, how about if I kick your butt and take your job, okay? Oh man, I love this scene! Really, Jim? Cat fighting? What are you, 14? Oh, wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Why, this is the most delicious strudel I've ever tasted. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I haven't been this choked up since Batman defeated Catman with Hostess Cupcakes. Dingle takes off with the toys and ore, but Santa has actually decided to try for some plot advancement. This action means squat because, once again, Lex does the actual work using his newly found not-needing-orb Jedi powers. And before you go thinking that the ball was actually a powerless talisman or focus... Nope. Remember, Dingle used it to great effect, blasting people and animating tiki heads to fight Santa. Lex just has magic powers too. Because the plot needed him to. Okay, this is weird. He should have popped up by now. Where is he? Um, yes, sir. Oh, well, uh, 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 fine. I'm Zeus. Blah, 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 blah. Plot resolved. Now go away. I'm busy. Oh. Well, I could have gone my whole life without seeing that. Santa catches his brother before he can plummet to his death, and the movie forms a Mobius strip. I'm making a second public challenge. Listen up, you swabs! Dingle demands a rematch! I propose Santa and me bowl for Christmas again! Again, Santa accepts either because he's an idiot or because the film needs padding. Again, there's cheating that is revealed within seconds by somebody else, again making Santa's actions utterly meaningless, and the day is saved again with no one growing or learning anything at all. Santa and Lex fly off to save Christmas, giving a flyby to the North Pole to fix it all up, which they could have done in the first place, but we had a tropical vacation theme from the games to cram in here. Lex, you did it! Alright! Ha ha! Man, we could do that in Detroit! No, bad movie. You go sit in the corner and think about what you've done. And thus, this movie called Elf Bowling ends its 70 minute runtime, containing only about 7 minutes of anything you could charitably call Elf Bowling. So, 
Elf Bowling the movie. What can you say? For a movie called Elf Bowling, this thing has, and I apologize in advance, no balls. If they'd ramped up the crudeness and made a dumb robot chicken-ass mean-spirited counterpoint to the traditional Christmas treacle, it could have at least been a guilty pleasure. On top of that, the pacing is awful. The whole thing feels more like someone made a bunch of silly bumpers to run between Christmas films on a cable marathon and sewed them together haphazardly. It's an amazing lack of effort with so little payoff. The result is Metamucil. It passes through you completely undigested. Compare this to Pinocchio 3000. That movie had a $20 million production budget and one of the most simple yet important moral messages at its core and was based on one of the most beloved of all fairy tales. So it had a long way to fall and fall far it did. But this little holiday loaf was squeezed out into mere six mil and doesn't even try to have a moral message. It was based on a game series that thought show me the money was the height of hilarity. Expectations were rock bottom and it did just enough to meet them. It won by not trying. A truly American film when you get down to it. This movie cost five dollars to own on DVD. Was it worth it? Every time my attention wandered I kept imagining Dingle's dialogue was coming out of the Ice King which made it tolerable. If it somehow comes on TV, use it to dodge It's a Wonderful Life. The irony value and sheer what the f*** is worth, I'd say, about 350 I said, damn it, monster, you stop bugging my children now. We work for our money in this house. You did that on purpose. Good job. Five bucks is a bit much by yourself, even with Tom Kenny. But for a group thing, if everyone enjoys throwing riffs at the screen and chips in a buck for the experience, then yeah, worth the purchase in a spot on your Cheeses of Cinema DVD shelf. Okay, yeah, I feel a little better. Was it? Feed a cold, stupid a fever? At any rate, looks like this is the last video of the year. It's been great, everyone. Thanks to all of our viewers. We'd like to get you all presents, but we're broke as hell. Speaking of, Jim, did you get that package? Yup, yup. And I hope I got yours, too, or else this sketch is boned. Well, these are pills. Hey, Zerplexafan. This will help me with my crippling phobia of Velcro. Jim, I, I don't know what to say. Hey, I got a great deal. Buy two antipsychotics and you get a stimulant of your choice free. This is... wow. Open yours before I cry. Yeah, there's stuff for that in there, too. Just open it. <gasps> Starch, it, it... Is this a jar of turkey fat? Peacock, actually. I got you a five-year subscription to the Fat of the Month Club. Every year they send you a new exotic fat. Next month is kangaroo, followed by bandersnatch. Oh. Oh. Happy <laughs> holidays, everyone. Oh. oh, I just got a message from old St. Nick way up in Christmas land. And he says the toys for good girls and boys are being made as planned. There's a truck for little Billy and a dolly for Molly, dear. But you ain't getting diddly squat cause you're really messed up this year. No, you ain't getting diddly squat cause you're really messed up this year. Hey, Pipples, if you liked our nonsense, why don't you give us a like, or a subscribe, or leave a comment down there somewhere? You can also do us a big solid by joining our Patreon, where you'll get to join us for live streams, get early access to the newest videos, and other such things. Geek Vision.